Hello, it's The Guardian Film Show, your rock of financial probity and a trusty guide through the world of cinema. This week we have a number of exciting investment opportunities on the table. We don't want to pressurise you, but there is a lot of interest and time is money. We're going to put you down for a couple of tickets. Up for grabs on this week's show, Michael Serra takes mescal in the desert in the grungy drama Crystal Fairy, and Robert Mitchum is determined not to spare the rod and spoil the child in the remastered, reissued resurrection of Hallelujah, Charles Lawton's 1955 thriller, The Night of the Hunter. First up, The Wolf of Wall Street, a swaggering Oscar contender, directed by Martin Scorsese and starring Leonardo DiCaprio as Jordan Belfort, an impish, high-flying financial trader who's surely heading for a fall. Ahead of the film's London premiere, I went into town to meet the film's co-stars, Jonah Hill and Margot Robbie. My name is Jordan Belfort. At the tender age of 22, I headed to the only place that befit my high-minded ambitions. The name of the game? Move the money from your client's pocket into your pocket. But if you can make a client's money at the same time, it's advantageous to everyone, correct? No. In every one of us, there's a part of us that wants everything and wants to be the best and wants to be the richest and wants to be this or that. And hopefully, in, in most people, it's a small percentage. And what I felt when playing Donnie was that, what if there was someone who was all that? Excuse me. Yeah. Is that your car on the lot? Yeah. Is yeah. it Jag? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much money you make? I don't know, 72000 last month. You show me a pay stuff for $72,000 on it, I quit my job right now and I work for you. Hey, listen, I, I quit. Do you see it as a morality story? I just see it as a portrait of these people's lives at this time. And I think why uh, Scorsese's, you know, he's my favorite filmmaker, but one of the reasons for that is that you leave his films discussing them. And you see, oh, I didn't like this, or I did like this, or I don't get why this happened. And that's what a great piece of art should do, it should spark conversation. People know what's right and wrong. Everyone has a moral compass. It's, what's more interesting is seeing other people's moral compasses getting swayed by, by influences, drugs, money, power, women, relationships. You know, it's, it, it's, it's funny to see how, how off track they can get. With this script, I'm gonna teach each and every one of you to be the best. This is the greatest company in the world! I was becoming a legend. Aren't you married? Yeah, but married people can't have friends. We're not gonna be friends. I was making so much money, I didn't know what to do with it. $26,000 for one dinner! Dad, we're not poor anymore. Tell them about the sides. Hey, the what sides? are these sides? They cure cancer? The sides did cure cancer. That's the problem. They were there. That's why they were expensive. <laughs> Time now to meet this week's rogue traders, Catherine Short and Henry Barnes. Catherine, we all went to see this together, didn't we? That's quite a rare joint outing. It was lovely. It was like a little family. How was it as a family outing? <laughs> it was, Is it like Christmas? It was great. <laughs> um, I had a whale of a time, um, and I think you two did, did too. So if you say anything otherwise, I will know you're <laughs> lying. <laughs> um, I really, I really, really enjoyed this. Um, it's come in for a lot of uh, backlash and, and self-righteous, pompous, hypocritical, dumbass um, criticism from people who say that it should have shown the impact of Jordan's um, malpractice mm. or, or dodgy dealings on its victims. Mm. Well, that's just rapid. I mean, that's a whole uh, other film, isn't that's it? That's a whole other film. And uh, is it okay? So, and why are we not allowed to sort of enjoy bankers in the same way that we've enjoyed gangsters through uh, Scorsese's career so far? I think it's absolutely daft that. And then people say, well, it's not realistic. It's not showing the sort of impact on people. Well. A lot of bankers like Jordan don't have enormous comeuppance. They get away mm. with it. It is fairly realistic. I thought, you know, I think all that is just so self-righteous, liberal rubbish. It's a wonderful film. I had a, a great time. It's so funny, isn't it? We were all laughing away and don't you dare it say otherwise. It is funny, and that's not something we associate with Scorsese necessarily. Or with DiCaprio, actually. No. I didn't, he's never struck me as a particularly funny, funny actor before, but the scene, the sort of keynote scene where he massively ODs mm. and then is struggling to drive home. From the country club. It's so funny. And I watched it again the other night, and it's just, it really is hilarious. It's a little bit all over the place. Oh, it's but a mess but in a kind of entertaining way. Yeah, it's a really, really fun mess. Mm. And I agree about the glamorization thing. I think it has to be glamorized. You have to understand yeah. 
what these people are addicted to and why they love their lifestyle. But that's, quite so that's much. what Scorsese has built his career on, basically. Yeah. Glamorizing and fetishizing it and saying, isn't this exciting? Now it's going to turn to hell. Yeah, and it is. And I think you'd be being disingenuous yeah. to say that it wasn't. You know, and that is yeah. part of the thrill of watching this film. And then for me, it's too long. It doesn't need an edit. And then the last third of it is perhaps less interesting because you have to have the comeuppance of the bankers. And mm. I think Catherine's yeah. right that in real life, that just wouldn't happen. Mm. They would get away with earning lots of money and screwing over a lot of people, and that is sort of the thrill behind it. Um, I thought Jonah Hill was excellent in yes. this. And I'm He's really kind surprised of Joe Pesci character, isn't he? Yeah, he is. And he, he kind of has this transition from being a geeky guy who hasn't got a hope to suddenly becoming one of these masters of the universe. And you can see that, I think, in day-to-day -day life, that people there are people like that who are oh. losers, born losers, mm. that become the most powerful people in the world. Mm, just look around The Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> look at us. <laughs> exactly, you know. And, you know, we don't know what to do with that power, but we have a great time using it anyway. Great responsibility yeah. as well. <laughs> um, Jonah Hill was great, but there were some other slightly odd casting choices. I couldn't quite get over Joanna Lumley as sort of fairy godmother. Um, and, and Jean Dujardin as well, I thought, felt like he was kind of just busting from another film and wasn't yeah. quite sure what he was doing. I didn't mind that. So you've got Rob Reiner, wonderful mm, to see a big part given to Rob Reiner, John Favreau, all these directors. Spike Jones was great in that little part. I think really nice casting choices. And what, what Scorsese loves is the, is the guy gang. You know, people have said this is sexist. What turns him on is the guy gang and mm. the dynamics of that and, mm. you know, the clown thing and all that. It's, that's how it works. And it's brilliant about that. And you totally want to be part of this gang. I totally wanted to be part of this. And it's not just men. There's that very big scene, which I think this is probably a still from where he singles out this woman that he's brought up from. Yeah. Uh, it's a terrific yeah, scene. It good it's scene. really good about women, that scene. But he's like a kind of demented game show host, isn't yeah. he? He looks like Errol Flynn, but he's acting like I don't know, Bruce Forsyth or something. Like, basically, Dale Winton. Yeah, Dale Winton <laughs> at, the, at the head of the office, kind of conducting the <laughs> proceedings. There's even an element of Stanley Tucci's character in The Hunger Games. There's a kind mm. of the showbiz gloss yeah. and the glamour of it. The grotesque of it quality of And it. also the idea that he's having to play up to a character that he's created himself, or this yeah. kind of myth of the idea of this man who has everything and can have, have even more on top of that. And he can't live up to that, and there is a tragedy to it as well. It's just that Scorsese doesn't take the time to show us that, and I think mm. it's the better film for it. Isn't it a bit of a Scorsese eating himself? It's a bit of a self-pastiche, isn't it? It's basically Goodfellas pantomime. It's, if anyone's allowed to eat themselves, it's got to be Marty. And I'd much rather he did this than Hugo. <laughs> oh, yeah, me oh, my too. God, yeah. Me too. Oh, Hugo yeah. was dead. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So one of this has some life to it. Yeah. 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 No, this is like he's taken a huge amount of drugs and Thelma too is gacking up <laughs> and they've gone crazy. It's you really fun. You're trying to get a suit <laughs> every week, It's aren't as if, it's as if. As if, yeah. <laughs> It's got pictures of your whole inner circle. This is bad. It's okay. Rub my temple. You're all right. This right here is the land of opportunity. You just tried to bribe a federal officer. <laughs> this is America. This is my home. Good for you, little man. Come here, the little man. The show goes on. They're gonna need to send in the National Guard to take me out, because I ain't going nowhere. That's Leonardo DiCaprio howling himself hoarse as the Wolf of Wall Street. We now move still further into wild country with Sebastian Silva's improv drama about the crystal fairy, the magic cactus and the Mayan prophecy of 2012. It's almost as if the cast have been doing loads of drugs. Hey, who's she? Isn't she amazing? Hola. Hi. Hola. This is Crystal Fairy. <laughs> Crystal Fairy. She's gonna come with us to the north tomorrow. We made this plan for us to drink San Pedro on the beach. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> Hang on to your bong, your mirror, and your rolled up banknote. Crystal Fairy casts lovable Michael Serra as an American tourist drifting through Chile and searching enlightenment via the medium of hallucinogenic drugs. Gabby Hoffman provides the magic cactus, Chile provides the beach, and from here, it's just a short step to Nirvana. It's very important before taking drugs as a group that everybody sort of commune with one another, you know? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I mean, it's either that or an orgy, and I don't think the boys are ready for that. Henry, a committed performance from Michael Sarah here? Yeah, definitely a committed performance from him, and a conscious effort to get away from the stereotype mm. of what we know of Michael Sarah already. Um, I actually really like this, and I thought going into it that it was going to be that worst of things, which is a director showing a drug trip on screen. And with the exception of Gaspar Noé, there's nobody that does that well, I think. Mm. But this is very simple. It's just two 
arrogant, slightly too forthright Americans and three very laid-back Chileans hanging out on a beach and cooking up a cactus and going on a drug experience. But it's done very sensitively, very softly. And it's actually quite a fun watch, this, I thought. Okay, so Scorsese is criticised for glamorising the, the lifestyle in yeah. Wolf of Wall Street. How about this? It's a glamorisation, but then it's also true to the age that they are, I think. They're very, you know, they're in their early 20s. I think that they're going to discover the world by going on a drug trip. And, and that's what this is about, and that's all it is. And I really like that understated tone that it took. Catherine, at times it reminded me, it's like a kind of honourable poor cousin to Las Vegas last week, where it's basically, <laughs> it's basically these Hollywood stars going off on a holiday and saying, we're going we're gonna to film it. But it's kind of charming where Las Vegas wasn't. Yeah, I don't buy that at all. I mean, that doesn't, on no level does that seem valid to me as a comparison. But, um, okay, yeah. Uh, Go no, with I, it. <laughs> Extrapolate. Um, no, I mean, this is, uh, it's great. It's surprisingly great, right? I mean, and I haven't seen Magic Magic, which he's also done with the mm. same director, but I love what he's doing here, and, and I love really what he did in This is the End, and, I, you know, mm. he's so great. It's weird because he's such a kind of cartoon, and, you know, we've always seen him being a cartoon, even in the sort of naturalistic things like Nick and Nora, or you know even Gino, but he, here it's you know he's really um, he's really scuzzed that up mm. and put in a really charming way. Yeah. I, I, it was it was an absolute revelation. Well, there's the sort of friction between what we think we know of him from his screen persona and the screen persona he's giving us here, and, and mm. they kind of meet, but there's a tension there, which is kind of interesting. And I think for me, what remi what it reminded me most of was. Um, Brian Gosling's w was only God forgives in terms of that relationship. So you've got a big star who's known for doing one thing, going off with a director, a foreign language director, you know, blah, blah, and and sort of subverting it. And only God forgives. It was like uh, just a massive subversion, yeah. perhaps too far. And this is the similar sort of thing. Mm. It is artistically successful. But this is much more forgiving. I think if you're a yeah, fan of Michael Cera, sure. there's yeah. a lot in this uh, of his stereotypical parts that he's played. There's a lot in this that you'll like. There is his, the aspects of him being goofy and a bit mm. arrogant. Mm. But at the same time, it's thrown together into a drama which actually means something and is an mm. interesting departure from what he does as well. Is it just too self-indulgent for, for most tastes, you think? Uh, there's an element of self-indulgence, but then yeah, I, I don't know really. I, th I think if you're willing to step into this world with them, then yeah, you can enjoy it. I think it's an independent film. It's made for a very mm. small budget. Mm. It's very much dependent on caring about young people going off and getting yeah. high. If you can get with that, then go And you it. know, he could be cashing in and going and making really bland rom-coms yeah. at this stage of his career. So. Credit to him for doing this. Yeah, he could be doing super bad too, so at least he's not doing that. I'd like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me. Yeah, you're embarrassing yourself. <laughs> Am I embarrassing yourself? <laughs> We're all one self, man. Yeah. Yeah. One giant consciousness. What, what's your religion? Are you religious or something? That's like doors of perception shit you're saying, you know? You ever read that book? You know that book? Alex doors of perception, yes! Yeah. Michael Sarah and Gabby Hoffman in The Crystal Fairy there. Let's end with a classic. It's the reissued version of Charles Lawton's Southern Gothic melodrama, The Night of the Hunter, starring Shelley Winters, Lillian Gish, and of course, the great Robert Mitchum. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all of Described by director Charles Lawton as a nightmarish sort of mother goose tale, The Night of the Hunter has its two pint-sized heroes pursued through the Ohio River Valley by Robert Mitchum's demented, tattooed preacher man. It's a film of deep shadows and demonic dark pockets, as enticing now as it was in the day. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, Safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, leaning on the everlasting arms. Catherine, love or hate? 
Oh, um, oh no. Fillmore Show. <laughs> Fillmore Show. <laughs> uh, love, big love. Is that right? Yeah. Um, uh, it's amazing, isn't it? And it's quite salutary in a week. You know, we're actually shooting this on the day that in the UK we have the release of 12 Years a Slave, and everyone is talking about it as this extraordinary. <clears throat> um, no, no one's ever seen a movie like it. But this is, this, you know, this is up there with it. This is pretty, pretty amazing. I find it very. Um, I rewatched Out of the Past uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I was sort of underwhelmed by Robert Mitchum. Mm. And this, and he's got such a strange, bulky presence. Mm -hmm. And this really uses him so much yeah. better. Charles Dawson obviously kind of gets that, but it's just, just shockingly great at every turn, isn't it? I mean, the imagery, I mean, it's just amazing. His his kind of masculinity is almost kind of grotesque and ludicrous and it kind of ma exactly. mines that really exactly. really well no, and the whole film is it's people say oh it's like a sort of fairy tale and it is like a fairy tale in that it's weird in that it's yeah. kind of all over the place tonally you have these great whiplash changes of pace so yeah. it has that kind of dreamlike intensity but in the way that actual dreams are yeah oh it's a nightmare basically mm. and it has like you're right the first half is almost like a kind of southern soap opera with the scheming guy coming into the house and trying to get the money of the deceased husband and then suddenly it goes off into this weird almost Willy Wonka-esque mm. alternative reality and great use of all the silhouettes against the backdrop and I believe it was inspired by German expressionism yeah. or something like that and you, you have these silhouette cut-ups and there's a wonderful shot where he's chasing them up from the cellar steps and he's reaching out with both mm. hands mm. to That's try and grab weird. them and he is a, a monster he's an mm. absolute monster yeah. and well, he's the wolf and they talk about yeah. DiCaprio's yeah. Wolf of Wall Street but this is the fairy tale yeah. wolf yeah. Isn't this it? has really got teeth totally you know it makes it wakes Wolf of Wall Street look a little bit gummy and mm. another comparison between the two I mean you wrote a piece a couple of weeks ago saying that in 2014 you want to see shorter films Wolf of Wall Street runs for three hours this film is 92 minutes and every scene runs as exactly mm. as long as it needs to. It tells you what you need to know and then it moves on to the next one. And it's so pacey and wonderfully dark and mysterious because of that pace as well. You're never quite sure where you're going to take a footing on it, I think. And yet, when it came out in the mid-50s, people hated it and Charles Lawton never made another film. Yeah, but people were dumb back then. <laughs> just <laughs> the old days. They couldn't read too well. Yeah. <laughs> just like crackers. You just got to pity them. I mean. They saw everything in black and white for yeah. a start. No <laughs> great hands. Um, <laughs> I think... There's so much going on that is strange in this film in terms of the camera technique as well. There's these wonderful shots where he's swooping across the, the house, the homestead, and there's a thing where he does this almost cartoonish zoom in to the kids in the basement. Mm. And there's so much weird, not just thematic mm. stuff, but camera work that I can understand why people were shocked and appalled by it at the time. And I, th I kind of think they still would be now. I mean, obviously yeah. we're much more intelligent now, much more sophisticated, <laughs> but it's still a film that it's almost legitimate to, to laugh at it at times. Yeah. And I think it's playing with those responses, and that's fine. It's about that John and that Pearl. Oh, them poor little lambs. To think I never hope to see them again in this world. Oh, dear madam, if you wish to know what a crown of thorns I have borne in my search for them straight chicks. Ruby, go fetch them kids. Oh, madam, I see you're looking at my hands. Would you like me to tell you the little story of left hand and right hand, the tale of good and evil? It was with this left hand that old brother Cain struck the blow that laid his brother low. Them kids is yours? My own flesh and blood. Where's your missus? Uh, she run off with a drummer during prayer meeting. The evergreen, incorruptible night of the hunter there. Weather permitting, Henry and I will be over at Sundance next week, but rest assured, the film show will abide and endure without us, and thank heavens for that. See you soon.